Hi everyone, it's Rachel here at Ditch the Diet. Welcome to episode number 41 of the Ditch the Diet podcast. So before we get into today's interview... I thought I would just apologise for not uploading a podcast as regularly as I normally do. So normally we upload a podcast every Thursday, but at the moment it seems to have been every second Thursday. So I do apologise for that and I do feel really guilty about not um, keeping up with the weekly podcast, but I just thought I would would explain um, as much as I really enjoy uh, recording the podcast, it's a really big commitment and uh, at the moment I have just started university and so I have a lot of uh, a lot of change happening in my life at the moment and it has taken a, ba- a bit of a back seat um, but don't worry because I do have lots of great interviews lined up so there will be a lot more podcast episodes coming out over the next few weeks and months in the lead up to Christmas. Yes, I did just use the C word because we are at the end of September now so we can start to think about it. It's the law. Um, so yeah, I started university a few weeks ago now um, at Glasgow Caledonian University. I'm studying human nutrition and dietetics. And it's been a bit of a roller coaster, uh, getting used to being a university student again at the age of 34 after many, many years since I graduated the first time. Uh, so there's been that, and then there's also been the launch of the Ditch the Diet Academy, which happened uh, about four weeks ago now and just getting all of the new clients and students on board into the academy and making sure that everyone's doing well it's just been it has been a bit of a crazy month Um, but here I am episode number 41 and today I've got a really great episode to share with you the audio from an interview that I ran last night on Facebook live with a functional medicine doctor called Dr. Tom O'Brien. And in this interview, we talk about the uh, Dr. Tom's book, You Can Fix Your Brain, just one hour a week to best to the best memory, productivity and sleep that you've ever had. So in this interview, Tom and I speak in, at great length about uh, brain disorders and memory disorders like dementia and Alzheimer's disease, autism, uh, attention deficit disorder in children, and uh, various other brain conditions. Uh, We talk about what impacts brain health, when do these brain disorders start, where do they start, do we have any control over them, what environmental factors affect our brain health and why we should even be concerned about this in the first place. And finally, what all this has to do with what you eat and how you exercise. So it is a really interesting one and I think you'll be able to take at least one uh, piece of information from this episode and apply it to your own life. So go ahead, listen to this episode of the podcast, enjoy, and I'll be back at the end to tell you a little bit more exciting news about the Ditch the Diet Academy. All right, good evening everyone, it's Rachel here at Ditch the Diet and I have the pleasure of Dr. Tom O'Brien's company this evening or this morning, depending on where you are in the world. Hi, um, Tom, how are you? Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. No, no, it really is a pleasure to speak to you. Um, And I'm really excited uh, because tonight we're going to be talking about a really interesting and very topical subject. Um, And I have your book here um, in my hands. And it's really funny that... um, your publisher got in touch with me at a time where I have actually been doing a little bit of learning about this myself. So it's going to be really interesting. So let's, before we get going, um, I'm just going to ask if you could introduce yourself for me, just give me a little bit of background and what you do and, um, and how you came sure. about, how, how this book came about. Sure. Uh, my initial training was as a chiropractor and my first week in chiropractic college, uh, 1978, January of 1978, the very first week I saw that there was a talk um, on a Wednesday evening by a Dr. Sheldon Deal, Mr. Arizona. So, <laughs> so this guy was a bodybuilder and he says, oh, he's a healthy guy. I'll go listen to him. 
And he just blew me away. Now, this is my first week. I knew absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, color televisions had just come out. They were the new big thing. And he had a color television in the room turned on, but with the volume off. And just looking at the picture in color was so unique and different. Mm -hmm. And then he walked over to a desk and opened his briefcase, took out a bar magnet about the size of an iPhone. Mm -hmm. held it up, walked up to the color television, and the picture went upside down. Walked away, and it went right side up. Walked towards it, it went upside down. Walked away, it went right side up. And he said, that's what electromagnetic pollution does to your brain and your nervous system. It throws you into chaos. Mm -hmm. and, and this was my first week in health education at all. Mm -hmm. And now we know, of course, electromagnetic pollution is just as potent a contributor to brain dysfunction as biochemistry is and uh, eating the wrong foods or uh, emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, electromagnetics are just as bad, just as bad. And in the book, we talk about it a lot. So th that was my first introduction to healthcare of any mm -hmm. type whatsoever. Yeah. So that that set the stage for the entire education for me. And um, uh, I happened to be in the audience in the same year, 1978, when Dr. Jeffrey Bland gave his first talk in Chicago. And uh, Dr. Bland is the founder of the Institute of Functional Medicine, mm -hmm. and he coined the term functional medicine. Okay. And, and what he did was he would say, now this doctor in the journal, the American Medical Association published this paper. And this doctor in the British Medical Journal two years later published this one. And this one in the journal Lancet published this. Now, can you see the links of how they're thinking and how they just need to connect each other? And we'd sit there and go, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. And, and for, so, for those and that so, don't know, what is functional medicine? Because I know there'll be a few people watching that might not know yeah. what that is. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about that. Uh, uh, so, yeah. so in my first year of education, the point is my first year, I learned this thing about electromagnetics and I learned about a big picture in traditional medicine. Now, what is functional medicine? Mm. When a person comes into a doctor with a symptom, it doesn't matter if it's diabetes or brain fog or seizures or recurrent miscarriages, whatever the symptoms are. It's like they have fallen over a waterfall and they've crashed into the pond below. Mm -hmm. They swim up to the surface and <laughs> oh God, they spit out the water. You know, oh, thank God I'm alive. And now they're in the pond of diabetes or the pond of recurrent miscarriages. And everyone's trying to stay afloat in the pond of their symptoms. But the water is so turbulent because the waterfall keeps falling into the pond. The water is very turbulent. You're still living the lifestyle that caused the problem. Mm -hmm. And so everybody wants a life jacket in the pond of whatever their symptoms are. And you always want the best life jacket with the least side effects possible. So you try the natural approach first. But if it doesn't work, you take the drugs. Mm -hmm. Don't be silly. You take the drugs for a short period of time so you can stay afloat. You can be functioning in the world while you're in this pond of diabetes. But you don't stay in the pond. You don't keep living the lifestyle that caused the problem. You swim mm -hmm. over to the side of the pond, get out of the water, walk up the hill, walk back up the river and figure out what the heck fell in the river that eventually carried me downstream and I fell into the pond of diabetes. What is it? What's going on in my life that set this up? That's functional medicine, is the investigation to find out the history, what's happened to this person that set them up for seizures or attention deficit or autism or miscarriages, or it doesn't matter. Uh, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. that the, pond, you, the life jackets are important to keep you afloat, but you've got to figure out what happened to you. Is it heavy metal poisoning? Is it plasticizers, the phthalates and plastic? Is it emotional trauma from when you were a kid? You've got to figure this stuff out if you want to get a handle on it. Okay. Okay. And um, so from there, uh, after that, 
how how what was your journey to writing this book in particular? Your oh, you, I see. you can you can fix your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm on the faculty of the Institute for Functional Medicine, and mm -hmm. I've been teaching doctors about this for the last almost ten years now. And uh, oh no, it's over ten years, almost twelve years now. And my role is to teach about uh, pathogenic intestinal permeability, or the slang term is the leaky gut. Because mm -hmm. so, most doctors aren't taught that in school. They don't know, and they think that it's nonsense until mm -hmm. they see the studies and the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of studies. And so in teaching functional medicine, um, my first book came out two years ago. It's called The Autoimmune Fix. Mm -hmm. And in that book, we talk about where does autoimmune disease come from? Where's it? It's the same concept. You have to go up, up river to figure mm -hmm. out or upstream to figure out what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then the natural uh, progression of how to help people understand these topics of why they get sick. The natural progression is, well, what's the system of the body that people are most afraid of? Mm -hmm. And everyone knows someone that had a heart attack and they survived and they changed their diet. They started exercising and they feel great now. Mm -hmm. Most of us know someone that was diagnosed with cancer and they took the protocols, whatever they were, and they feel good. Everything's in remission. No one knows anyone diagnosed with a brain deterioration disease who's doing good. No. And that really scares us when you think about it. When, when you get a diagnosis of depression or anxiety, Depression is not a deficiency of medication. Mm -hmm. So the medications are a life jacket and sometimes they're really important. And anxiety, you need a life jacket. It's really important. But you have to figure out why is my body doing this? Where is it coming from? Okay. And so by talking about these concepts in the brain and by using so many examples in the brain, I think people can relate to it very well. Mm -hmm. and, and they say, oh, yeah, I do that. all." For example, when you're filling the gas tank of your car, when you're putting fuel in the car, can you sometimes smell the gasoline? Yeah, yeah. You're smelling benzene. Benzene is a neurotoxin. It goes right through the nose, straight up to the brain, and it's a neurotoxin. It kills brain cells when you're smelling it. But we think, yeah, I can smell that. And, oh, it doesn't feel bad. You know, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> no, you're not. You're mm -hmm. killing off brain cells. Well, I have to fill my gas tank. Yes, but you're standing downwind. So what do you do? Just walk around to the other side of the hose. Now you're standing upwind and you don't smell it anymore. Mm -hmm. But okay. people, people just don't think about these simple ways of protecting themselves. Mm -hmm. And what you learn in the book is that it's the accumulation of these toxins that we're exposed to that is triggering the disease we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, uh, a meta-analysis, it means they look at a lot of studies on one subject. Mm -hmm. The subject was sperm count in healthy men, not infertile men, in healthy men, between mm -hmm. 1974 and 2011. What did they find? They found that in 186 studies, there has been a 59% reduction in sperm count for men across the planet, 59%. Now, that doesn't mean anything to you until you realize that scientists worry about extinction of a species at 72%. And we've lost 59% in 37 years. What do you think is going to happen in the next 20 years? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to get better. It, it, it can't it, and it won't. There's many reasons why, but it won't. Mm -hmm. So what, how, how do you hold this? You've got to go back upstream and ask, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. And it's the amount of endocrine disrupting chemicals, hormone disrupting chemicals that we're exposed to all the time. Every baby that's checked in the United States today, every baby at birth, has on average 180 toxic chemicals in their bloodstream at birth. Many of them are neurotoxins. They're not supposed to be in the bloodstream and babies don't have an immune system yet to protect them from all this toxic stuff. Okay. And so the neurotoxic ones, you may have heard that the incidence of autism mm -hmm. is going up exponentially. 
Mm-hmm. When I came out in practice, it was one in every 10,000 were on the autism spectrum. Now, by 2026, the science tells us it's going to be one in two wow. will be on the autism spectrum. And it's because of all the poisons in mom's bloodstream and the baby is then exposed to. For example, the Danish government did a study. It was supposed to be six months uh, a study. Uh, turned out to be almost three years because there were so many people that wanted to speak about it. Uh, the study, the topic was, should we recommend women not breastfeed a first baby? Not breastfeed. Okay. Like, what? What? Yeah, breast exactly. Milk. Yeah, breast milk's the most important thing. But here's why. People in Denmark eat a lot of fish. Mm-hmm. Good and healthy for you. And in Scotland, I imagine, they eat a lot of fish. I would imagine. Yeah. Well, the fish come from the fjords. The fjords are narrow and deep. Well, the farmers have been using PCBs, insecticides, pesticides for 30, 35 years on their crops. And the rain washes the PCBs down into the water, into the fjords. The fish have PCBs in them. There is no study anywhere that says the amount of PCBs in the fish, in the fjords, is a danger. There is no study. But the problem is, if you don't have excellent detoxification pathways, you can't break down the PCBs in the fish that you're eating, and the PCBs accumulate in your body. And where do they accumulate? They accumulate in the hormone-loving cells because they're endocrine-disrupting chemicals, EDCs. So they accumulate in the testosterone-loving cells of the testes in men and in the estrogen-loving cells of the breast, the ovaries, the uterus, and the brain for women. Mm -hmm. So here you have a young woman like yourself, and you know someday, if not now, I don't know if you're married, but someday you may want to get married and you may want to have children, right? You may. And if you do, you know, hopefully you'll have a healthy pregnancy and no problems in the delivery. And But in the last part of the pregnancy, your brain sends the message down to your breast, okay, let's turn on the lactation cells now. Let's start making some milk because mm-hmm. we've got to feed this baby. So the breasts start making milk. The mammary cells of the breast start making milk. And where do they get the raw material to make the milk from? The fat cells of the breast. Mm -hmm. And what's loaded in the fat cells of the breast? 20 years, 25 years of PCBs accumulating in the Mm -hmm. fat cells of the breast. So now the healthy baby is born. And now mom breastfeeds baby, wonderful experience for baby, really important, and for mom. But baby's getting this toxic, highly concentrated breast milk because it's loaded with PCBs that are neural toxins. And baby doesn't have an immune system to protect himself or herself from these neurotoxins. The incidence of autism is going through the roof. Mm. So the commission came out after three years and said, we think it's more important to breastfeed than not breastfeed. Mm. And I personally agree with that. However, for someone like yourself, you know, for young women, get smart before you get pregnant. You detox your breasts. It Mm -hmm. takes about six months to get that toxic stuff out of your breast. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, then you can rest easy that you're protecting your future baby's brain because Mm -hmm. you aren't going to give them any toxic milk. Okay. Right? Critically important. But if you don't understand this stuff, if you don't take the time to read about this and really understand it, your baby will be one of the statistics. Mm -hmm. So... Let's talk about brain disorders then. Um, what the, the ones that came to my mind were um, things like dementia, Alzheimer's disease. Um, mm-hmm. What? So let's let's have a chat about them first. What? what sure. All right. Let's have a chat can, about that. Let's yeah, and then we can sort of we can. I want to ask you about the the role of autoimmunity and how it affects our brain and possibly even discuss what autoimmunity actually is first of all but we have a we have a lot of brain disorders and they are on the increase 
Yes. Especially, um, especially is. dementia and Alzheimer's as well. Yeah. Uh, by, by the way, your your readers are welcome to ask questions. I oh know. yeah. If yeah. they type, if they type questions, then hopefully we'll have time to get to some of them. Yeah. Yes. Sure. So let's talk about that. My friend, Dr. Dale Bredesen at UCLA, uh, he runs the Buck Institute, it's the Alzheimer's Research Center, and he published in 2014 the first paper on this topic. Um, he's published many papers. He's world renowned as a researcher, but he published successfully reversing cognitive decline and Alzheimer's in nine out of 10 people, successfully reversing it. You ever hear of anybody that's reversing Alzheimer's? No, never, ever. Yeah, there's two pharmaceutical companies that have shut down their Alzheimer's research departments and laid off the scientists because they've spent billions and they realize they'll never find a drug. Why? Well, Dr. Bredesen gives you this visual. Imagine an old factory, an abandoned factory. The windows have been knocked out. There's broken glass on the floor. There's gang graffiti on the walls inside. There's 36 holes in the roof, you know, and there's puddles on the floor. It's just a funky old building, right? Mm -hmm. That's your brain with Alzheimer's, that okay. there's 36 holes in the roof, and you have to fix all 36 holes to fix Alzheimer's. Do they have elevated homocysteine? Fix it. Do they have a gluten sensitivity? Get it out of there. Do they sleep seven to eight hours a night? Teach them how. Do they exercise, just gentle exercise, at least 30 minutes a day, every day? Show them how to do it. Um, do they have food sensitivities? Get them out. There's 36 things on the checklist, and he published this. And that when you address all 36 things, the brain starts working really good again. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that you, you reverse the cognitive decline. And that, that was in 2014. Now there's hundreds of cases of this. And Dr. Bredesen started teaching in conjunction with the Institute for Functional Medicine about a year and a half ago, um, weekend courses for doctors to start learning about this. And there's Bredesen clinics now opening up around the world. And so people are learning how to reverse their cognitive decline, their brain deterioration. And it's all outlined in the book, uh, the, the mechanisms. How do you tell if there's a problem? What are mm -hmm. the tests to do? And if you find out that, that these tests come back positive, what do you do about them? So mm -hmm. the, goal, the goal here is you, you got to go back upstream and mm -hmm. figure out what happened to this person. For example, there are three primary types of Alzheimer's. The most common type, 60 to 65 percent in clinical practice, is called inhalation Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. It's what you're breathing. Mrs. Yeah. Patient, Mrs. Patient, if you go on vacation for a week or two, and you come back home, do you have to open up all the windows to air the house out? Oh mm -hmm. yeah, you've got mold in your house. Mm -hmm. You're breathing mold every day, and mold is a huge problem with brain deterioration. Mm -hmm. And if you, you just have to fix it. You've got to stop being exposed to mold, but you never will explore how to do that if you don't read the book and then do the test for mold. You just won't never think about it. And you'll mm -hmm. try eating healthier, you'll try this, try that, you feel a little bit better, but your brain keeps going down. Why? Because you're breathing this in, it goes right through your nose, straight up to your brain, causing more inflammation and more inflammation and more inflammation. Mm -hmm. That's why you learn in the book about a smell test. Mm -hmm. The smell test, there are many articles now written on this smell test that um, it's a marker of early brain degeneration. And when you get someone over the age of 70, for example, and they've got a loss of smell, it's a very accurate predictor of five-year mortality. They're very likely to die within five years of something because there's so much inflammation in their brain. Mm -hmm. And for, for younger people, when you come back and you've lost a sense of smell, it's called hyposmia, a, a reduced smell, um, your brain is cooking. You're killing off brain cells right now. Mm -hmm. and why is that? The, the, the nerves of smell go back straight up into the brain, right above the area of memory. Now, why is that? Because mm -hmm. our ancestors, if they walked into a cave and they'd smelled saber tooth tiger, they needed to back out of there really quick. They needed to remember what that smell was. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. When you smell, it goes right past your memory centers. And it was a protective mechanism. 
So we now can look at this. And in the book, we talk about how do you do this? How do you get the test? Really simple test costs 50 bucks, $50. And you just check and you see. And if you find you've got a problem, here's a checklist of what you do next. You got to do these more advanced blood tests to see where's the inflammation. And then you go upstream to figure out where, why is the inflammation in the brain there. And then you get rid of those problems. And then three months, six months later, your, your brain's working better like it was three, four years ago. And you do the smell test again, and now you pass. You're fine. Mm -hmm. but, if, but if you don't know to do the tests, you never mm -hmm. check. And, yes. and, and the, so if you've got a loss of smell, the first thing you look for is, am I being exposed to mold? That's mm -hmm. the first thing because it's so very common, very, mm -hmm. very common. Okay. Um, I had a question that I wanted to ask you that might fit in quite well here while we're talking about the subject. Uh, in the media in the UK at the moment, uh, probably in the US as well, there's been a big, um, a big emphasis in the last week or so about the, the, the there's new research, research that states that being exposed to, uh, so people that live in cities are more at risk of developing dementia and an old age because of the, uh, the, f the exhaust fumes from cars. What do you think about that? Um, we started talking about that, um, uh, uh, in 2009, mm -hmm. um, that the studies started coming out, um, about that or a little earlier, actually every dog that they do autopsy on in Mexico city has evidence of Alzheimer's. This was in the 1990s. They were showing that every single dog mm -hmm. in the mid 2000s, the urine test came out and the blood test came out so they could start checking children. Every child they check in Mexico City has evidence of brain inflammation, killing off brain cells, the mechanism of Alzheimer's. Every single child. Mm -hmm. It's what they're breathing. Mm -hmm. And the studies have come out They're They're in the book that talk about if you live, live within a quarter mile of a freeway or a highway mm -hmm. and where there's a lot of traffic in a city. If you live within a quarter mile, your, your child's risk of developing attention deficit um, is much, much higher. I don't remember the number. I think it was 30%, maybe 40% higher because mm -hmm. they're breathing these toxins that go right into the brain and cause inflammation in the brain. Mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely true. So what do you do? Well, I live, I live a qu within a quarter mile. I, we, we can't move. Get air filters in your house especially in your children's bedrooms. And so you just have to learn, like mm -hmm. walk around the other side of the hose when you're pumping gas. You know, you have to learn how to deal with the toxins that you're exposed to. And then over the long term, you talk to your elected representatives in the government to say, clean up the air. Mm -hmm. I'm not voting for you again until you clean up the air. You know, mm -hmm. the, that if they get thousands of people telling them this, they'll see it's important and they'll start voting to clean up the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, autoimmunity, how does it affect our brain? So what do you, what does that mean? Uh, and what and how does it affect our brain? What can we do about, what, what can we practically do about that on a practical day-to-day -day level? I know, have, that, I know that's a big question. Do you have eight hours? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. So I, some, just, I just did an eight hour, an eight hour talk last weekend in Stuttgart, Germany on that topic. Uh -huh. And I'm doing the same eight hour talk this coming weekend in Vancouver, British Columbia, mm -hmm. uh, same talk. So mm -hmm. to summarize it for you, <laughs> um, autoimmunity means your immune system is attacking your own tissue, mm -hmm. your thyroid, your muscles, your brain, some tissue. Mm -hmm. um, you have elevated antibodies to some tissue. And the common school of thought has been in for, for a lifetime is quiet down the immune system, give them steroids, suppress the immune system. Mm -hmm. And we know now there are hundreds and hundreds of studies that doesn't work. People keep getting worse. Uh, they calm down the symptoms for a little bit, but they keep getting worse. They all do. So why would you suppress the immune system? Because the immune system is attacking your tissue. Okay. So, you're in the pond of your immune system attacking your brain or your immune system attacking your thyroid. Okay, you're in the pond. So what do you do? Well, you need a life jacket so you can function properly. 
Mm -hmm. keep your thyroid working okay. Maybe it means taking thyroid hormone. Maybe some natural things will do it. But you don't stay in the pond. You have to get out of the water, walk up the hill, go back up river and figure out what fell in the river that's making my thyroid not work so well. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you one example. All of our hormones get into the cells of our body by something called receptor sites. The receptor site is like a catcher's mitt. Um, In the game of baseball, the pitcher throws the ball to the catcher. And receptor sites are like catcher's mitts. They sit on the outside of the cell and your thyroid hormone receptor site sits there And as thyroid hormone comes by in the bloodstream, it goes right into the receptor site. It opens the door of the cell and the hormone goes inside the cell. Mm -hmm. And then the door closes. Insulin will not go into a thyroid receptor site. Testosterone will not go into a thyroid or an insulin receptor site. It goes into a testosterone receptor site. Mm -hmm. Estrogen, progesterone, melatonin, serotonin, all the hormones are the same. They've got their own receptor sites they go into. Okay. Okay. But there are three chemicals we're commonly exposed to in our environment that have an attraction to sit in the receptor sites of thyroid hormone. And if you have those chemicals, they they don't turn the doorknob to open the door. They just sit in the receptor site. They sit in the catcher's mitt. So if thyroid hormone comes by, and it tries to get into the receptor site, the pitcher throws the fastball to the catcher. If there's three baseballs in his glove, it just bounces out, Mm -hmm. right? The hormone just keeps going. It can't get in Mm -hmm. because these chemicals are sitting in the receptor site. What What are the chemicals? Mrs. Patient, if you're in the elevator of a hotel and the elevator door is open, can you tell the swimming pools on that floor right away? And many people say, oh, yes, they can smell it. But er not everyone can smell it, but they smell it because they have an alertness, a sensitivity to chlorine. Mm -hmm. Because chlorine is one of the chemicals that sits in the thyroid receptor site. And if you have chlorine sitting in your thyroid receptor site, your immune system is going to attack that chlorine to try to get rid of it because it's not supposed to be there. And when it attacks the chlorine and uh, it hits the thyroid receptor, damages the thyroid receptor, now you make antibodies to get rid of the damaged thyroid receptor cells to make room for new cells to grow. And if that's not a problem at all, except if it happens every day, every day, every day, eventually the antibodies to your thyroid become self-perpetuating. Now you have an autoimmune thyroid disease. Okay. And, and it comes from chlorine. And there are many studies on this. Uh, there's a mechanism called molecular mimicry. And this is all, all explained in the autoimmune fix in everyday language. It's hard to do it in three minutes, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I you know. know. But molecular mimicry means your immune system is making antibodies to fight wheat, as an example, mm-hmm. uh, or, or dairy or anything. And... Mm-hmm. Someone's trying to call me there uh, <laughs> on Skype. Oh, and man. and uh, you're making antibodies to wheat. Mm-hmm. Well, the antibodies are looking for wheat in the bloodstream. Now, your bloodstream's just a highway. You know, there's lots of traffic on the highway, right? It's all going the same direction, but there's no lanes. So everything's bouncing around in there as it's traveling on the highway. So your antibodies to fight wheat are looking for a signature of wheat and they see that protein signature, they fire their chemical bullet and they destroy the wheat molecule. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But that protein signature of wheat looks a whole lot like the protein signature of the inside of the thyroid that's facing the bloodstream. So sometimes if that's your genetic vulnerability, those antibodies to wheat will start attacking your thyroid or your brain, Mm -hmm. or your muscles, or your bones, or your eyes. It just depends on what your genetic vulnerability is as Mm -hmm. to where the mimicry, the molecular mimicry will occur when you make antibodies to wheat. As an example, it goes after some other tissue in your body. And then you develop the autoimmune disease of your thyroid. 
And for thousands and thousands of people, when they stop eating wheat, their thyroid antibodies go down to normal. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we and there are hundreds of studies on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've read quite a lot about that. Um, you talk about uh, your you talk about the pyramid of health in the book, which I found was really fascinating, actually. And you had added mindset into the what was a triangle. Uh huh. It used to be so, a triangle. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought we could you could tell me a little bit about the pyramid of health. So what what are the four? What you makes bet. up the what makes up the pyramid? You bet. And and you know the goal here is that we change the paradigm mm-hmm. of the reader, that the reader starts thinking differently about yeah. how to take care of the health and the health of their families, their babies and their families, mm-hmm. because. It's never going to be like it was 10 years ago. It's a very different world now, and it's getting worse. Yeah, yeah. And we, and we all have to learn how to think differently to protect ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. So the pyramid of health, there's four sides to a pyramid. There's the three sides, and then there's the base. Mm-hmm. So there's four sides. The base is your structure. Your structure is the home of chiropractic and massage and pillows, orthopedic pillows and orthotics in your feet and car seats, how you sit in a car, how you sit in a chair, uh, your bed and how you sleep in a bed. Mm -hmm. All of those structural things can cause any problem in your body. Anything may be caused by a structural imbalance. And I give a couple of case studies in the book that are jaw dropping Mm -hmm. as to sometimes the problems with your bladder sometimes may be caused by a problem in your low back. Sometimes, Mm -hmm. as an example, sometimes the problems with digestion may be caused by a problem in your neck. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it could just be structure. Mm -hmm. Then one side of the pyramid is biochemistry. We all know about biochemistry. We know about um, the drugs to take, uh, the foods can be a problem, uh, Mm -hmm. the things we drink, all all the chemistry of our body Mm -hmm. and the air we breathe. That's all all under the biochemistry. Mm -hmm. The next side of the pyramid is the emotion or the spiritual side. And that can cause most any problem in the world can be triggered by emotional trauma and stress and the complications that can sue after that. And then the last side of the triangle is the electromagnetic. And that's these things Mm -hmm. that we do this to all the time. We put it next to our brain and Mm -hmm. think, oh, it's no problem. Really? Really? Just read Mm -hmm. the studies, especially for kids, because it's much worse for kids than for adults. Why? Because their skull is thinner Mm -hmm. and they can't filter this radiation that's getting into their heads. And so when you learn about the four pillars of a pyramid Mm -hmm. and you realize any health condition may be contributed to or fueled by any side of the pyramid of health, Mm -hmm. then you don't put all your eggs in one basket and just Mm -hmm. take the right vitamins and and think you're going to be fine. No, sometimes you have to look at your emotional health or your spiritual health because that can be a big problem. Or you have to look at the electromagnetics. We have some people, chronic fatigue people, they do not do better until they get one of these. It's almost like a mosquito net that goes above the bed and it just covers the bed. And it filters out electromagnetics because some people live in apartments or condominiums. And when they look for a wireless, there's 25 different wirelesses that are hitting them all day, every day. And so for some people, that's the link that, see, every disease is a disease of inflammation. It's always inflammation. At the cellular level, your cells are on fire. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is it a brain cell or a kidney cell? Is Mm -hmm. it gasoline or kerosene? Mm -hmm. That's what you go upstream to figure out, Mm -hmm. you know, what tissue is involved and where's the inflammation coming from? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And, okay, I have so many questions now. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Isn't it great? Yeah. yeah. See, see, the problem is people of your generation, 
mm-hmm. the millennials, they want it now. They want the answer now. Yeah. yeah. Now, if, if you can pull up the book for a minute, what's the subtitle of the book on the cover? Um, this up subtitle, in just the one, upper right corner. Up here. Yeah. Um, just one hour a week to the best memory, productivity, and sleep you've ever had. That's the key, guys. That is the key. Because if you think you're going to get it all now, you're going to be Mm -hmm. overwhelmed and you won't know where to start. Mm -hmm. But if you allocate one hour a week to studying one thing in the book, just one thing, Mm -hmm. and you implement that in six months, you've got this down and you and your family are protected. Mm -hmm. But if you try to get it all at one time, it's way too overwhelming. I'll just give you one example. A huge problem in our world today is phthalates, the toxicity of phthalates. That's the chemicals in plastics. Mm. So, so you go to a coffee shop, you get your coffee to go, you take a sip of the coffee, the steam from the coffee raises up in the cup, it condenses on the underside of the lid, and it drips back down into the coffee full of bisphenol A, BPA, because it's in the lid, it's in the plastic lid. Mm-hmm. You put the cup up to your lips, and the whole underside of the lid gets hit with that hot liquid, tapers down into the opening, you drink it full of bisphenol A. Bisphenol A is an endocrine disrupting chemical. It affects your brain. It affects the brain development of baby in utero. If mom has BPA in her body, um, it affects our hormones. It affects testicular function. It may be the trigger for premature ejaculation for men or Mm -hmm. infertility in women. These plasticizers are a huge problem. So what do you do? And you you, in the book, you know, there's so much. But one of the things you do, you order online, you get four stainless steel coffee mugs Mm -hmm. and you you, you go into the coffee shop on your way to work. You say, fill it up, please. And you're sipping your coffee with um, uh, from your stainless steel mug. And then you drive home or you go home at night. You take it out of your backpack and you rinse it out in the kitchen sink. And it's in the dish, the dryer, the rack to dry. And you go to work in the morning and you forgot it. Say, oh, and you stop for your coffee. Oh, I forgot the stainless steel mug. Well, I I need my coffee. So then you're Mm -hmm. stuck. You're stuck and you get the regular one. No, you buy four and you keep them in your car in a bag. Why in a bag? Well, because if they're not in a bag, every time you turn a corner, they hit each other. They clang around and it's an annoyance. (laughs) Right. So you just learn these little things. Right. And And by the time you've got four of them in your kitchen sink drying out overnight, you say, oh, I better put them in a bag and put them by my shoes in the morning to take them with me to work, you know, or put them in the car, right? But you can't use plastic wrap on your food. It leaches phthalates into the food. You can't use plastic containers to store your food in. It leaches phthalates into the food. And that may be the trigger, that may be the deciding straw that broke the camel's back that has caused infertility for you. That may be the trigger. And mm-hmm. there are studies on phthalates and infertility, right? Mm-hmm. Not every infertile couple has a phthalate problem, but some of them do. Okay. So if you take six months and just learn one hour a week, so one hour, okay, you just read about the, the BPA in coffee cups. Okay, mm-hmm. good. I'm going online. I'm ordering my four stainless steel mugs now. Mm-hmm. You're done for the week. Yeah. You're done. Because yeah. then you, you've got that down for the rest of your life, right? And next week, okay, I'm ordering glass containers for the food to keep in the refrigerator, um, Mm -hmm. leftovers. And then it'll take you a little while, and then you're done. And Mm -hmm. every week you do so, okay, I need an air filtration system in the house. Mm -hmm. So and you're going to research air filtration systems, and you order an air filtration system. Every week you do one thing after another, just one step by step by step. Yeah, I think that's the key. That's definitely the key. Um, Yeah. A lot of my, a lot of the people that follow me, we talk a lot about diet and nutrition. Yeah. So I thought we would just have a quick chat about um, brain food. Uh, so there's a lot of chatter about brain food. And are there, are there specific foods that you can eat that will help to improve your memory or improve your brain function? Oh, or, you bet. You bet. Yeah. You bet. However, If you keep living the lifestyle that's caused the problem and you just increase your nutrition, it's going to help a little bit, but you're still throwing gasoline on the fire. What do you think is going to happen? Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I've been a nutritionist for 35 years and it's cr a critically important component. Let's give you one example of a brain food. Mm -hmm. The membranes, the walls of your brain cells, they communicate to each other. Uh, one brain cell communicates to another through, they're, they're called lazy Susans. Mm -hmm. And I'm dating myself, but when we used to go to the doctor, we do a urine sample uh, in the bathroom and then you put it on this thing in the wall in the bathroom and you swing it around and it, it rotates around to the other room on the other side of the wall where the nurse is, she takes it off and runs the tests on it. That mm -hmm. thing is called a lazy Susan. Yeah. And in Chinese restaurants, sometimes they'll have them uh, at a big c community table and they put the food in the center and it just swings around easily for people to take whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Those are lazy Susans, they swing around. Yeah. Your brain cells communicate to each other by lazy Susans. That one brain cell creates some chemicals that go right through the membrane of, or the wall of that brain cell into the membrane or the wall of the next brain cell, which adds a few chemicals. And then it goes to the next one, which adds a few chemicals. And the result, and that's how your nerves communicate. Okay. Yeah. When you eat, and those, those brain cells, the membranes of your brain cells are made up of fats. Yeah. When you eat bad fats, transformed fatty acids, deep fried foods, margarine, garbage fats, yeah. you build your house out of straw instead of brick. You build your brain cells out of the fats of French fries. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, your lazy Susans get rusty. They don't rotate very easily. Um, the, the chemicals can't get through this thick mucousy membrane of transformed fatty acids very well. Mm -hmm. So your thinking process, your response time processes are compromised. Mm -hmm. When you give children fish oils, because that's the fats that make up 40% of the membranes are DHA from the fish oils. When you give children fish oils, Six months to a year down the road, their IQ goes up two to four points, which is substantial. And why is their IQ going up? Because their brain cells are communicating better because they've got better raw material to make cells from. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Patient, you have an entire new body every seven years. Every cell regenerates. Every cell in your body, including your brain cells. So mm -hmm. the question is, are you building another faulty brain cell? Or are you building a healthier brain cell? Mm -hmm. So when you have the right nutrition in your bloodstream, you're supplying the raw materials to build healthier cells. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. So you can, so uh, so you can change the cells in your brain. That I think I, I put that in the agenda. Um, right. One of the questions: um, Are we stuck with the brain? No. brains that we're born with. Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. You, you, you can fix your brain. That's the title of the book. Yes. You can fix your brain. But it takes one hour a week because there's so mm -hmm. much to learn. You know, yeah. and I'm really, I'm really excited. Uh, we're just launching our brain master class. Mm -hmm. that, uh, and uh, it's at a huge discount right now because we're just launching. And I want a lot of feedback from people. I want to know, uh, uh, what do you think? Is this easy to understand? Is it sequential in a way that works for you? I mean, take as much time as you want. You know, you take uh, a month, two months, four months doing the class because it's video education of mm -hmm. all of these different steps. And uh, there's an 80 percent discount right now so that mm -hmm. we can get the feedback. And I'm just thrilled. It's just launching today as okay. we're talking. It's just launching. And so you need, to send, you need to send me um, get a, a link oh. to that sent so that I can yeah, thanks. upload I, it. I, you bet. Okay. I hadn't thought about that. And I'll ask my staff to do that, to send you a link. Yeah. And we can put it in the link with the show notes on the podcast as well. You bet. You bet. Uh, but it's, it's really fabulous because there's maybe 150, maybe 180 videos of me. Some of them are six minutes long. Some of them are 30 minutes long, but each one is on one topic. Like mm -hmm. how does vitamin D help to prevent the development of autoimmune diseases? Mm -hmm. And I'll just give you that example. The way your body works, the way your gut works, this whole mm -hmm. thing about leaky gut mm -hmm. and why vitamin D is important to heal from leaky gut is if you think of the Panama Canal, mm -hmm. a ship comes up to the Panama Canal, the gates open, the ship goes in, those gates close, and mm -hmm. then 
uh, water comes up or down, depending. So in your body, in between two cells in your gut, the gates open, food goes in, the gates close, your immune system checks this thing out. Is this safe or not? Then the gates in front now open and the ship goes forward a little bit more. The food goes deeper down into the space between the cells. The gates close. Another part of the immune system checks it out. Mm-hmm. Then the gates open. And when you see the pictures of this, because I put the pictures, the artist drawings of all this in the master class, when you say, oh, this makes perfect sense. Now, why is vitamin D so important? Because vitamin D controls the, the opening and closing of the gates. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you have adequate amounts of vitamin D, you have a much lower incidence of autoimmune diseases, including brain diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. That's Mm -hmm. why you find the studies on brain function and vitamin D to be so helpful. That that's why. And so when, when, when you've got a visual of this, it just makes sense. And then the rest of your life, you and your kids will make sure to have adequate vitamin D levels. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, give me, if I was to, we're just going back to food again, um, if I wanted to eat something that would help to improve my memory, what would it be? Well, there's two things. One, in terms of a category of foods, it would yeah, be berries. Yeah. Berries. Berries. Mm-hmm. Blueberries, raspberries, black raspberries, those, those, not so much strawberries, but, but the others. Berries are really good because of the polyphenols are great for your brain. Studies mm-hmm. show that if you have one cup of blueberries a day, one cup, mm-hmm. you, within three years, you're thinking like you were 13 years earlier. You've reversed cognitive decline of 13 years by one cup of blueberries a day for three years. Wow. So I buy organic blueberries, always organic. Mm-hmm. organic blueberries frozen they're mm-hmm. in my freezer and i just you know, every once in a while like uh, maybe two three times a week if i want something sweet or at nighttime i want a little snack i just take a cup full of blueberries and just eat them frozen they're really tasty yeah i do as well actually yeah, um, nice. how, how important is organic when it comes to food critically important critically mm. um, in past times scientists were saying well eh, it's not that big a deal But we are so toxic today. There are so many different toxins we're exposed to. The Journal of Pediatrics says that in the United States, it's 250 pounds of toxic chemicals per person per day are being dumped in the United States. That's five 50 pound bags. And how much is 50 pounds? That's over 20 kilos. Mm -hmm. That's over 20 kilograms five of those bags a day, every single day of these toxic chemicals in our environment. Mm -hmm. And so nowadays it's much more important than ever to have organic because our threshold is so bad. And uh, I'm going to get a little personal, if I may, with you for a moment. Go for it. (laughs) Okay. Um, As you were just um, kind of scratching your ear or something, could could you lift your arm up again there? Oh, I know what you're going to say. Absolutely right. There it is. The inks. The inks keep leaching into your body. And this, uh, for some people, it is the trigger that causes the autoimmune diseases lupus and scleroderma. It's the trigger. Why? Because your immune system is trying to protect you from the toxins Mm -hmm. that are leaching in all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a few people where it's fatal that they can't stop the autoimmune mechanism. They can't figure out why is the immune system attacking the muscles of this person and mm. she's just degenerating and where's it coming from? And it's that her whole body is tattooed. Mm. And that I, ink. And when I read that part of your book, I was I was hanging my head in shame. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh no, I never even crossed my mind. Right, you know, but but knowledge is power if you mm-hmm. understand what to do. Yeah. So yeah. for people that have tattoos, it what it means is you have to make sure that your detox pathways are working really well. Mm. And so you've got to do the genetics to see where are my vulnerabilities in detoxification and mm. what is my glutathione level and how well is methylation working? All these geek terms. I'm sorry, they're geek terms, uh, but you, but it's the checklist. 
You just have to go through the checklist and make sure that everything's working well. If it is, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Sort of, you know, because it's just more toxins coming in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, know, it's important. It's important to understand what the mechanisms are that may be causing your body to, you know, where is the straw that broke the camel's back? Yeah. Yeah. What what is it? And then you start addressing that. That's Mm -hmm. why it's one hour a week. Yeah. I love it. I love it. We have one question, one question. Um, and I'm hoping that you will, you will know this word. There's one word that I don't recognize. Um, and it's a question from Erin. Erin has asked, my daughter has severe learning difficulties and suffers with dystonia. Yes. Um, a lot of people have suggested uh, CBD oil to help alleviate muscle spasms. What are your thoughts on using CBD? Yeah. Yes, CBD can help. Uh, it certainly can help, but it, um, she doesn't have a CBD deficiency causing the problem. Mm-hmm. So it may be a safer life jacket to use mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, and there's no harm. There's no downside to CBD. Mm-hmm. The articles are very clear. It's safe as can be. It's very safe. But okay. the question is, you have to go upstream mm-hmm. and figure out why does my daughter have dystonia? Where mm-hmm. is it coming from? And it's not a deficiency of CBD. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, that's why, you know, we, I, I have a team that I've trained that works with people online. And so you, you want answers and you don't want to do it by yourself. You can work with our team and have uh, Skype sessions or Zoom sessions with them. And you know, we've got very extensive questionnaires and, well, here's the test you might consider doing. And um, here's the reason why. And, you know, we just talk through all this stuff with you. Uh, mm-hmm. But yes, yes, Aaron, um, C- CBD may help and there's no downside to using mm-hmm. CBD. Okay, great, great. Um, just before we wrap up, uh, your book, uh, You Can Fix Your Brain, uh, is it's out now, is that right? Is it pu- available to purchase books, now? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 the book's yeah, available. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. And I guess we can get it on in the usual places like Amazon. Or That's the correct. Yep, you bet. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I did the Audible. This time. Oh, I, that's great. I did it. Yeah, it took four days. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. Literally, because it's eight hours a day for four days, me talking in a microphone, but not being a robot and just reading on a page. You know, yeah. it's, it's like trying to talk this stuff through and just yeah. be focused and focused. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's pretty good. I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm i more, I, I'm an audible person. I, I listen to pretty much all of my books. Ah. Um, so I'm definitely going to get the audible version. So, um, yeah, I can't even imagine how difficult that must have been. <laughs> the yeah, concentration was, like must, must have been exhausting. Oh, it's challenging, yeah. you know, but I knew that I nailed it because mm-hmm. the last paragraph in the book is um, a little emotional for me. Mm-hmm. And I knew that I nailed it when I was done. The producers behind this whole panel of you know dials and all of that, you know, because mm-hmm. it's in a recording studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a 40 something guy and he's tattooed from his fingertips all the way up to his neck and down his leg. He's, you know, tough guy. Mm-hmm. And, He's crying. Oh, really? He's crying. So I said, yes. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, I'm really looking forward to listening to it, actually. Really looking forward to it. Um, and if anyone wants to find out more about more about you and your team and what, they, what you can offer in regards to coaching and things like that, where's the best place to go? Yeah, the website is thedr.com. Thedoctor.com. Just don't spell mm-hmm. the word doctor out the dr.com okay and, great. and the books are there the brain master class is there the consultations there there's mm-hmm. lots of information that you can download and read you know mm-hmm. my job is to empower you to take action in a healthy way mm-hmm. so my job is to be the guide that takes you out of the pond up the hill back up the river to ask mm-hmm. the questions and then figure out what fell in and then what do you do about it? Mm-hmm. That's our job. Yeah. Uh, be, uh, so we try, not try, we do our best and uh, we're very happy and grateful for the opportunity to do that. No, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to speak.
speak to you. So thank you very, very much for your time. Oh, thank um, you. I will make sure that all of the links and things that things that we've spoken about are in the show notes. So if you're listening to the podcast, you'll be able to just scroll down on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you're listening. There'll be links there. You can click if you're watching on Facebook. Um, I will pop the links into the description once we're finished. And all that's left to say is thank you so much, Tom, um, for your time. And I really look forward to listening to your audible version of the book as well. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to be with you. Oh, you're welcome. So that's it from me this week, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to the Ditch the Diet podcast. Just before you go, a couple of really important things. The first thing is, if you're listening to this episode and you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, please subscribe because the more people who subscribe to the podcast, the more people who will actually see the podcast in the first place. So you'd be doing me a huge favor by subscribing whatever channel you're listening to, whether that be on iTunes, on Spotify, or even on Stitcher. And the second thing is that on Monday, uh, so if you're listening to this on the day it comes out, on Monday the 1st of October, the Ditch the Diet Academy will be opening its doors again for new members. So we've been closed for a month and um, now we are opening again on Monday. So if you missed the first cohort, then your chance to join is just about to start. If you don't know what the Ditch the Diet Academy is, then here's a quick rundown. I created the Academy to be a um, somewhere that you can go to learn how to quit yo-yo dieting from start to finish in a step-by-step, paint-by-numbers manner to show you exactly what to do, exactly how to eat, exactly how to exercise from scratch. So if you are currently on a yo-yo diet and you are completely at a loss as to where to go from here, then the Ditch the Diet Academy is a step-by-step process um, and we take you through that in groups and you get your own login to our very own built-in social network to our own website which contains a whole array of courses that you can take a community to participate in and there is help there for you when you need it so if you would like to find out more about that it's ditchthedietacademy.com forward slash dtd dash academy ditchthedietacademy.com forward slash dtd dash academy i'll put the link in the show notes so wherever you're listening you'll be able to scroll down on your page right now and just click the link there thanks again everyone for joining me for another episode i'll be back um either next week or the week after with another episode of the ditch the diet podcast until then have a fantastic day ahead